Hey there guys, recently I have been leveling alts in the Elder Scrolls Online and after my sorcerer had reached level 50 I had gained some champion levels and I wanted to level up some alt characters. So I decided to look for a guide on how to level up the fastest way in ESO so I could bring those alt characters to max level as fast as possible. The guides I found were great but they had one thing in common. Grinding. Well, back when your boy Keo was young, I could grind the original Guild Wars for days. However, I simply do not have the time and the patience to grind mobs for hours on end. And, as most of the guides also state, it gets boring really fast. Therefore, I want to provide a leveling guide that focuses on fun and diversity. This guide could be interesting for casual players that can only play for a few hours a day or even a few hours a week. Keep in mind that the methods that I provide in this guide are subjective, meaning that it is based on what I would like to do but it could be interesting for you as well. Before we head into the video, if you want to support me, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment and watch this video all the way to the end. Okay, first things first, the preparation. If you are new to the Elder Scrolls Online, decide on what class you would like to play and stick with it. Try out some classes until you're level five, look for some class guides or make your decision right away. For example, I chose a high elf sorcerer as my first class, but I wanted to play another playstyle at like level 35. However, I would advise you to not put any time in an alt character at this point. I will discuss why you shouldn't do this later in the video. If possible, level with a friend of the same level. This allows you to quest together and that makes it more fun. And for those people who don't mind spending some extra money on the Elder Scrolls Online, you can purchase an ESO plus subscription. This gives you a 10% XP boost along along with access to tons of DLC and other extras. However, this is definitely not necessary, I don't have it either. There are more ways to increase your experience gained when leveling your character. However, I do find them a bit harder to use, obtain or cost some gold. Therefore, I won't use them in this video. Okay, let's first discuss the levels 1 to 10. For your first character, you want to get to level 10 as soon as possible. The best way to do this is to explore the world, follow your main quest or your zone quest. Zone quests in particular are interesting since they have been recently introduced and they show you a specific quest line unique to that zone. Zone quests can easily be recognized by their unique quest marker. Zone specific objectives can also be found by opening the zone guide by pressing P and navigate to the zone guide tab. Here you can also click on the continue zone story if you ever lose track of your zone quest. If you already have a character at level 50 and you're leveling on an alt, pick another zone to level in. Personally, I don't find it entertaining to level up in the same zone twice. Currently, I do not have any of the expansions yet, so the zones I could travel to at level one are very limited. However, the zones I can travel to offer enough variety to level up in. Additionally, the zones have level scaling, meaning that you can level up in any zone you prefer without getting beat up by the enemies. The enemies of ESO will adjust to your level and therefore they won't be too tough to beat. You might get some experience scrolls during during these first 10 levels, but don't use them yet, we will need them later on. Also, if you are interested in leveling a specific set of skills, make sure to add as many of these skills to your skill bar. Having more skills of one particular skill track on your bar will level these specific skills faster. So do your zone quests, quest in different zones and use more skills from a specific skill line to make them level faster. Moving on to the levels 10 to 50. Now when you reach level 10, you get the opportunity to queue up for dungeons and battlegrounds. By pressing P on your keyboard, you can easily navigate to the Dungeons and Battlegrounds tabs. As you can see, there are daily rewards tied to queuing up for either of these activities. I highly encourage you to do at least one dungeon and one battleground a day, since they give a significant amount of experience compared to the other activities you can do in the game. Here is when I started to use my experience scrolls that I got through the daily login rewards or through leveling up. You want to queue up for a random dungeon first. The queues for these activities take longer than battlegrounds. You can continue you questing or do anything else you were doing while waiting for this activity to get ready. When you get the message that your dungeon is ready, enter the dungeon and you can use your experience scroll. Also make sure to check for quests that can be found at the start of the dungeon. These quests can give you even more experience after the completion of the dungeon. After you have completed your first dungeon with an experience scroll, you should have already leveled up about two to three levels. That goes quick enough, right? After your dungeon activity, make sure to not forget about your random battleground activity. Battlegrounds also give a huge number of daily experience, but instead of defeating monsters, you are up against other players. 
In these battlegrounds, the objective you must complete is different each time. Depending on the battleground, you must capture a relic, hold the chaos ball, participate in a team deathmatch and more. Even if you are not into PvP, I advise you to give Battlegrounds a shot since the experience bonus is well worth it. Each consecutive completion of a dungeon or a Battleground that day still gives a considerable amount of experience. But it gives you considerably less experience than the daily reward does. However, it is still worth doing if you find it enjoyable. Make your way up to level 50 by doing dungeons, Battlegrounds and zone or main quests. For me, the levels 10 to 50 involve a combination of these activities. If you have limited time, make sure to do at least one dungeon and one battleground a day. And if you get bored of a specific zone, move over to the next one while queuing up for a battleground or a dungeon. Once you have reached level 50, you are not actually done with leveling. At level 50, you will gain champion points after you are leveling up. This is also known as CP. So you can actually level beyond the maximum level of 50 with this mechanic. These champion points can be spent in a special champion menu to gain passive bonuses for your character. Champion points are easier to obtain than normal levels especially the first 50 to 100 levels. You can easily get those levels within a few hours. Also, from what I've understood is that the developers of ESO actually made it easier to catch up with people that have a higher CP. The first couple of hundred champion points require less experience than the later champion points. But now the interesting part. Remember when I said you shouldn't create an alt character before your first character hits max level? Well, those champion levels aren't tied to your max level character but are actually account wide. Meaning that if you decide to create a new character, that new character can also use the champion points that you have earned on your main character. So that new character can benefit from the effort that you've put into your max level character. This can make combat, traveling and the use of some utilities easier, faster and more efficient. For example, you can passively increase your damage done with a specific set of weapons. In turn, this means you can defeat enemies much faster and therefore you will be better at dungeons and questing, which allows you to level your alt character much faster. Oh, and not to forget, when you get a mount on one character, it is also usable on other characters, meaning that you can also use that mount right away from the start when you create a new character. You only have to select it in your collections menu and press H to mount up. Keep in mind that upgrades like mount speed and backspace don't transfer to other characters. But hey, this makes traveling a lot easier. If this video helped you, don't forget to leave a like or leave a comment if anything is unclear. And if you want to see more MMO videos, Guild Wars 2 in particular, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. For now, I would like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!